Welcome everyone. Let's build a chainsaw. Okay, so as you can tell, I picked up a Farmer Tech kit saw. It is a clone of the MS660 from Steel. This is the same. This is a Holtz form of saw, essentially, or the Blue Thunder. They're all made by Farmer Tech. I'm still not sure if I'm going to do a full-fledged how-to video on this or if I'm just going to video me putting it together and then running it. There's several people on YouTube that's already made videos on how to put these things together and they've done a pretty good job. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out as we go. I am going to go over several of the upgrades that I'm going to go ahead and do to this saw while I'm putting it together. I guess that's a benefit of having the saw come in a box and pieces. So I picked this saw up from Farmer Tech's website during their Chinese New Year sale. So this saw was right at 250 for the kit. That same MS660 or 661, they don't make the 660 anymore, but the 661 from Steel is over $1,600. I'll, I'll throw a current price up on it on, on the screen. I'm going to be taking my time putting this thing together. I have honestly never built a two-stroke so this will be a first for me so we'll see how it goes and a little bit of my mechanical background is i've built several chevrolet engines like 855 big cam cummins 12 valve cummins i've built a ton of 3406 caterpillar a models b models c models some of the later ones i did some 348s 3412s i've messed around a little bit with some 3500 series engines i built several 3306s and like 3126s so Engine building is not something new to me. I've, I've did it for many years, but the two-stroke world is new to me. So this is gonna be fun, figure out how to get it put together and hopefully have a big saw that we can do some chainsaw milling with or cut some big logs up with. So let's get this thing unboxed, see what all we got. And let me go ahead and show you what uh, upgraded parts I'm gonna go ahead and put in this thing. Okay, so some of the parts that I feel would be better to run as OEM would be like the wrist pin bearing, the steel decompression button. Uh, eventually I'll probably end up just deleting that, but for now I'll throw it in there. I've got cylinder hold down bolts, OEM bolts, uh, OEM worm gear for the oil pump, the fuel hose, oil hose, oil filter, impulse line, uh, several kit or uh, several gaskets from the OEM from steel. I did end up picking up a Farmer Tech high output oil pump. I believe the factory oil pump is a 0.9 millimeter and this is a 1.3 millimeter. I'm gonna go with a highway dual port muffler for this build. That should help some of the performance out, help this thing breathe a little bit. There's a dual port muffler. We'll end up opening this thing up and seeing what the inside looks like. There's a baffle right in here. Probably end up having to take that out or op opening it up a little bit more. I've decided to put a highway big bore kit on this saw, so it's gonna take it from roughly a 92 cc to a 98 cc. For assembly, I do have some steel multi-lube and some of the super lube, which probably end up using the multi-lube, and I have some pretty decent, I believe it's Permatex. Let me go grab it real quick. Yeah, I've got some uh, Permatex Ultra Slick. I've used this quite a bit on different engines and stuff. This stuff works great, so. On like the case gasket, I've got this Permatex Moto Seal that was recommended by most people putting these things together. Uh, for dirt bike stuff, chainsaw stuff. Anyways, that'll go on the case halves between the gaskets, just a thin layer of that, just to help kind of seal everything up, just in case it all isn't perfectly flat. And for now, I haven't decided what large bar I'm gonna get yet. Uh, I haven't bought my chainsaw mill. Probably either a 36 for doing some chainsaw milling and some felling and stuff, uh, but I do have a couple large oak trees I want to cut down. So I'm still thinking on putting a 42 inch bar, but for now, just to get this thing up and going, we got a 24 inch Oregon VersaCut bar. Got that. I've been wanting to try this Forrester brand chain, so not sure how well it'll do, but we'll give it a go. The 72 EXL chain from Oregon, E84 from Oregon. These chains look pretty decent. So we'll see, see how it does once we get this thing up and going. I'm sure they'll do just fine for it. Also, uh, another upgraded part, I wanted to do an Elasco Start pull handle, so that should help. As much compression this thing's going to have, uh, that should help pull on it quite a bit easier, so that's another upgraded part we're doing. Let's get in this box and see exactly what all comes in it and kind of give everything an inspection. Got the side cover, dog's already installed on that. All the covers. That's top of the engine cover. That's the air filter cover. Part of the air filtration carburetor 
area, carb base, what it's called. So everything is halfway labeled. There's the carburetor. See how it looks. I've seen where a lot of people have wanted to upgrade this. So that may be something that we do. We'll just see, see how it works, see if it does okay. If it runs like this, then we're just gonna run it for a while. Air filter. Has a dust cover for the air filter. Recoil start. So all we'll end up doing is unwinding this rope out and putting that elasto start rope in there. The dog for the body. Uh, different parts, looks like your anti-vibration oil line, impulse line, all that stuff's here in, in, this, box, in this bag. This is the crankshaft. Uh, I have to look at this, look this over pretty well because this thing is beat to all heck. Here's the bar studs and nuts and different hardware. Here's the crank. When I get it out of the package, I'll inspect it a little closer, but it actually looks like it's doing okay, luckily. A lot of times people that, that uh, the ship or the carriers that ship items, they don't necessarily care what's in it. They get tossed around and everything else. But here's the ignition coil. Uh, it looks like kind of some random parts. I see some anti-vibration bushings, some carburetor stuff, bar guide, oil pump. Here's the flywheel for it. This is the brake, spring, all that's in the bag by itself. There's a brake band, all that stuff. Here's the body, if you will, gas tank and throttle assembly. Looks like some of it's already put together. Got a clutch. We'll see how well these springs do on this clutch that came with it. Uh, definitely have their labeling wrong. This says ignition coil on it. That is definitely, from my experience, not an ignition coil. Uh, here's the Farmer Tech factory muffler. This is going to be the factory cylinder and piston. This is a 54 millimeter. I want to say the one I purchased. Yeah, the one I've got is a 56 millimeter. This one is a 54 millimeter. We'll see. Hopefully it does good. We've got... Okay, crankcase assembly. That's going to be the two case halves. It's going to be one of the first things we need. And we've got the brake lever for it and the handle. I didn't go with a full wrap handle. I may end up adding one to it in the future. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. That's all the parts. Let me try to get this mess a little more organized and kind of set up a little better workflow of kind of where we're going to start and where we're going to end at. Okay, now for most of this, I am going to be referring to the parts manual. I was able to find a PDF copy of the parts manual and basically the service manual for this saw online. Uh, I'll be referring to this quite a bit just for torque specs. I'll be referring to the parts book for making sure I have the correct fasteners and making sure I'm not missing any pieces when I'm putting it together. Uh, if you have opportunities to use parts books and service manuals, use them. It's going to save you a headache down the road. Okay, that's going to do it for today. So thanks.